Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new my name is Meg. So I know I've been gone for a while now a lot has been going on and I just have been kind of stressed out as most of us have been um, so I haven't really been posting a lot but I wanted to come back with a banger so today I'm going to be showing you one of my favorite projects that I've ever done which is right behind me it's a DIY faux brick wall. Um, it's actually pretty inexpensive. I think everything that I got came out to less than $100 for the whole wall. This project is actually super easy. Anyone can do it. I actually did it all by myself. So if you have help, it's obviously going to go faster. Um, but basically what it is, is you tape off a brick pattern on the wall and then you put joint compound over it so that when you peel the brick off, it looks like the texture of real brick. Um, now this was not my original idea. I don't wanna you know, take credit for something that's not mine. I couldn't find the original person who created it, however. Um, I watched so many YouTube videos and a lot of people said they were inspired by other people, so it's kinda hard to trace it back. But whoever created this, if you know, just leave it down below. And um, I looked at the rustic palette on Instagram and that's how I saw how to do it. So I uh, just wanna give credit where it's due. And let's dive on into the tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, I started off by marking the wall every three and a half inches. Some people do four, some people do three. I did three and a half just to be safe. And I marked it all the way down. And then I'm going to put the laser level, which I have right here. Um, I actually got a laser level to make it easier for myself. You can use um, just like a regular level, but seeing as this wall is so long, I just wanted to make it easier for myself and do a laser level so that I know the line is straight all the way across and I don't have to keep getting up on a ladder a million times to measure it. I can just get up to tape it. So hopefully this works. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start probably with this section. Um, the top is gonna be the hardest part. Okay, so as you can see, I set up my laser level. If you don't have a laser level, you can use a regular level, but this is going to make it easier. So that's the mark I put on the wall, and I have it laid out, so I'm gonna lay my first piece of tape on that line. And luckily I have my fridge, because I was using my tripod before, but it doesn't go this low, so I just have been using it on my fridge and I lower it and lower it. So if you have something magnetic, uh, that can work too. Okay, and then going across vertically, you're going to do every three and a half inches across and every seven inches, because you want the bricks to be about seven inches. And then from those lines, you're gonna do every seven inches across. Okay, you guys, so I will say, this is not a hard project. That's a very tedious one. Um, it has taken me hours to do that, and I still have all that left, but I actually ran out of tape. I got two rolls of the tape, and I ran out, so I'm probably gonna need one more um, just because I had to do all of the vertical and all the horizontal lines, so it took up a lot of tape, but I think it's gonna look so good. Okay, so I took my joint compound and I put it in a smaller bucket, and you're just going to smear this with a putty knife onto the wall over the tape. And you don't have to do it super thick, but thick enough that you kind of can't really see the tape anymore. And then when you're done with that, you wanna peel it off right after so it doesn't have time to dry. I actually did cut those, so that part doesn't matter. But yeah, basically you just take the tape and you peel it. And it is messy, so make sure you have a plastic bag handy. Okay, 
Okay, so now I am going to paint. So this is three shades of brown. These apple barrel ones are like 50 cents at Walmart. And then I mixed in to the medium brown and the dark brown a little bit of red, like just a drop or two. So I don't know how that's gonna come out, but we'll see. So I'm gonna start with the lightest color. I'm gonna try to do like light strokes to start with. And if you get a little bit off, it's fine because you're going to paint that with white paint later. So. Okay, so as you can see, I've done the bottom and I'm going up to the top. The top, I've only done the light color so far and I'm adding like that little um, brownish red that I mixed together. I kind of completely eliminated the middle color. You can use it if you want to, but I've just been using the light color and then the dark color. Um, so as you can see over here, I did some like a little too dark, so I'll have to whitewash those. But a light hand, I think, is definitely what makes this project um, look realistic as opposed to over here where I kind of did a little thicker. I don't know. I just think it looks a little bit better. Okay. Now I just finished doing that whole wall because I am an actual psychopath and it is not a project for the impatient. It's probably going to take you well over a day to do this. Um, or it's going to take you all day. If you want to do the joint compound, and taping in one day, it's gonna take you a while. So I'd plan on just getting this done if you want. Um, I would plan on doing this like over a week's period, but look how good this looks. I'm so excited. And basically what I'm gonna do now is whitewash the brick, even though it kind of already looks a little bit whitewashed as you can see up close. Um, I'm gonna be taking a linen white paint. I might try it watered down at first and see how that looks. Linen white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum is the one I use, um, but you can use probably any white chalk paint. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna try to water it down a little bit and I'll show you what that looks like. I did mostly chalk paint and then literally like a splash of water. This is the consistency. What you wanna do is go like in between the mortar lines, the faux mortar lines. And I did get some on the wall, so I'm just gonna paint that as well. You go in between, get most of the paint off the brush so you don't want to just glob it onto the brick. Get most of the paint off the brush. And then you can sort of go over. You don't want to do the whole thing. You do want to leave some, and I think it's going to come out pretty good because it like, you can still see the, the brick through through this, so hopefully I didn't do it too much, but if I did, it's not that big of a deal. But I think that actually looks good. Okay, so this is the final result. I think it came out really awesome. And John hung up a chandelier. I got that on Amazon. It was like $60. I repainted the island uh, that we had. It was like a gray and it was shiny. I just didn't like it. Oh. <laughs> and then this is actually contact paper. And I actually don't like contact paper that much because it tends to bubble. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's my fault. <laughs> uh, but I did use contact paper on this. And I do like it. Um, I just wanted to see how it looks because I am going to replace the top with actual real wood. And then, of course, the star of the show is the faux brick. And I hung up a curtain all the way to the ceiling so it looks kind of glam. But this faux brick came out so good in my opinion. I just love it. I think it looks really awesome. And we're going to end up painting the cabinets white. I'm gonna paint that wall like a cream or a white. Um, so we still have stuff to do over there, but as far as the wall goes, like this to me 
looks pretty amazing. And I actually did a board. I'm gonna put some metal stools under there, but they're still coming in the mail. So I haven't done it yet. I also wanna tell you, you wanna seal it with polycrylic. I haven't done that yet, but it will make it more durable uh, because if you leave the joint compound without anything over it, the paint will protect it a little bit, but you definitely wanna seal it, especially if it's in your kitchen. So just get a polycrylic. Um, again, you can get that from Home Depot, so you can get the joint compound and the polycrylic together. Um, and you just want to put on like one or two coats of that and that will make it super easy to clean and durable. So that's definitely a good idea. I just haven't done it yet, so I just wanted to explain that. But this is a super fun, easy DIY. It did take me a few days. You kind of have to have patience to do this project, but I think the end result is beautiful. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was so fun and um, give me a thumbs up if you like these DIY videos. I really enjoy making them and I really have a passion for like home decor and it's just so fun like decorating new spaces. I need to redo my office so that's probably next on the list and I need to finish my kitchen. It's not fully completed but um, there's lots to be done. But I do have the weekends off so I will try to film more DIYs for you guys and more videos soon. And I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.